What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Terrebray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, April 10th, 2019. You'll hearing some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Radio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Actress Lori Lothian could receive up to 20 years in prison after facing a new money laundry charge for her role in the college admission scandal, federal prosecutors said Tuesday. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Massachusetts named Lothian and 15 other parents in a new superseding indictment, also charging them with conspiracy to commit fraud. The actress was already out on $1 million bail on conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest service fraud. Lockin's husband, fashion designer Massimo Giannulli, faces the same charges. The two are accused of paying $500,000 to help their two daughters gain acceptance to the University of Southern California through its roaring team. Neither girl um, participated in the sport prosecutor set. Convicted, Lothkin and Gianna Nulli each face up to 20 years in prison. The parents' name in Tuesday's indictment are among some 50 people charged in the so-called Variety Blues thing involving parents, school officials, and the alleged mastermind of the scheme, William Rick Singer. He pleaded guilty in March to charges of racketeering conspiracy, money laundry, tax conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. The indictment comes one day after actress Felicity Huffman and 13 other parents pleaded guilty to charges related to the scheme. The Desperate Housewives actor pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest service mail fraud for paying $15,000 to allow her daughter more time to take the SAT test. In a statement released Monday, Huffman said she had, quote, deep regrets and shame over her actions and she plans to accept responsibilities for her crime. Federal prosecutors said that as part of the deal, they would recommend a light sentence for Huffman. Oscar Isaac and Charlize Theron voices Gomez and Morticia Adams respectfully in the first teaser trailer for MGM's upcoming Adams Family animated film. The clip released on Tuesday features the iconic creepy family choosing to move into a haunted mansion that is possessed by an angry ghost. Other members of the Adams Family also making appearances include Gomez and Morticia's children, Wednesday played by Chloe Grace Moretz, and Pugsley, played by Finn Wolfhard, along with Uncle Fester, played by Nick Kroll. Patricia says to Wednesday, who brings home a red balloon in reference to the horror film It, strange, there is usually a murderous clown attached to the other end of these. The Adams Family, from directors Conrad Vernon and Greg Tieran, is set to arrive in theaters on Halloween. Beth Miller is set to voice Grandmama, and Allison Janney will voice family arch nemesis Margot Nieder. Uh, the synopsis reads, get ready to snap your fingers. The Adams Family is back on the big screen in the first animated comedy about the kookiest family on the block. Funny, outlandish, and completely iconic, the Adams Family redefines what it means to be a good neighbor. The cast of Avengers Endgame, including Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor, Robert Downey Jr., who plays Iron Man, Scott Johansson, who plays Black Widow, and Paul Rudd, who plays Ant-Man, appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to discuss the film and their time in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. The group assembled on the late-night talk show Monday shared some of their favorite Marvel movie lines. Hemsworth said on Thor Ragnarok that a child who was visiting the set came up with his character's line for when he is reunited with the Hulk, played by Mark Ruffalo in a battle arena. Hemsworth told Kimmel, I was talking to the Hulk, and I'm saying, oh my god, it's you, where have you been? And he was on the sideline. He's like, why don't you say when you look up at Loki in the crowd, it says he's a friend from work. He said, a kid gave us that line, and it became one of the best lines in the movie. Rudd said his time on Captain America Civil War was the most memorable because he was around the Avengers for the first time. Uh, Rudd said, we had filmed, already filmed Ant-Man. But there was a little bit of a bubble, and all of a sudden I was seeing everybody in their suits, and it was very exciting. Going on to describe how much fun he had playing with Chris Evans' Captain America's shield. Hemsworth and Johansson read a, child, a children's book version of Avengers Infinity War title, Twas the Mad Titan Thanos, along with fellow Avengers stars Don Cheetah, Jeremy Renner, Evans, and Ruffle. The book offered a more kid-friendly and comedic version of what happens in Infinity War, which involved Thanos wiping out half of all in existence. Avengers Endgame is set to arrive in theaters on April 26th. The latest trailer for the superhero epic 
features Captain America and Iron Man reuniting for the first time since Civil War. Game of Thrones star Kit Harrington mentioned on Late Night with Seth Meyers how he pulled an April Fool's prank involving almond milk on his wife, actress Rose Leslie. Harrington had previously pranked Leslie last April Fool's Day by placing a replica of his head from Game of Thrones in their refrigerator said Monday that he tricked his wife into thinking her favorite almond milk brand was going out of business. The actor said she won't drink any other almond milk, so I just wrote an article about how this company makes her favorite almond milk was going under because of Brechtons. The, pr uh, the prank backfired on Harrington, however, after Leslie used her husband's credit card to bulk older, uh, order the almond milk. He continued, I ended up spending 150 quid on almond milk. Harrington also discussed HBO's upcoming eighth and final season of Game of Thrones, which begins on April 14th. Uh, the Jon Snow star said there are definite big moments. Harrington and Leslie appeared together on Game of Thrones with Leslie portraying Jon Snow's former love interest, Ygritte. The couple tied the knot in June after dating for nearly six years. Harrington recently shared on The Tonight Show how he once wore a Jon Snow, Jon Snow costume to Leslie's birthday party. Preacher executive producer Seth Rogen has confirmed that AMC's supernatural drama will end season four. Rogan made the announcement on Monday by tweeting a short teaser trailer for Season 4 that is set to premiere on August 4th. The colorful clip says the end is now. Rogan later clarified on Twitter that Preacher was not canceled. He says it's not canceled, it's just ending. Preacher, based on the comic book series of the same name by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, follows West Texas Preacher Jesse Custer, played by Dominic Cooper, his ex-girlfriend Tula, played by Ruth Nega, and the Irish vampire Cassie, played by Joseph Gilgum, as a journey to find God and save the world from demons. Rogan's executive produces Preacher alongside his longtime collaborator Evan Goldberg and showrunner Sam Catlin. Uh, Rogan and Goldberg have co-directed several episodes. The show was renewed for a fourth season in November. The Crown has found its Princess Diana. Netflix announced in a tweet Tuesday, newcomer and Academy Award-winning actress Emma Corrin will portray Lady Diana Spencer in season four of the popular series. The post reads, Emma Corrin will play Lady Diana Spencer in The Crown season four. Filming will begin later this year. Corrin says it's a surreal experience to be joining the show's cast. The actress says, I've been glued to the show and to think I'm now joining this incredibly talented acting family is surreal. She also added, Prince Diana was an icon and her effect on the world remains profound and inspiring. To explore her through Peter Morgan's writing is the most exceptional opportunity and I will strive to do her justice. The Hollywood Reporter confirmed Cora will join the crown in season four. The actress said she is beyond excited and honored to be part of the show. The Crown creator, Peter Morgan, had nothing but praise for Corin, who appeared in an episode of ITV series Grantchester in February. He says Emma is a brilliant, brilliant talent who immediately captivated us with when she came in for the part of Diana Spencer. As well as having the innocence and beauty of a young Diana, she also has an abundance, the range and complexity to portray an extraordinary woman who went from anonymous teenager to becoming the most iconic woman of her generation. Season 3 will premiere on Netflix later this year. Olivia Coleman will take over the role of Queen Elizabeth II from Claire Foy, while Tobias Menzies will replace Matt Smith as Prince Philip. Emerald Fennell will portray Camilla Parker's Bowles. High School Musical director Kenny Ortega has signed a multi-year deal with Netflix. The streaming company announced in a news release Tuesday, the 68-year-old director, producer, and choreographer will develop several upcoming projects as part of the agreement. Ortega will begin by directing and producing the movie Auntie Claus and the new series Julie and the Phantoms. Auntie Claus is based on the Elsie Primavera book series of the same name and will be adapted as a musical by Tiffany Paulson. Julie and the Phantoms is a musical comedy series based on the Brazilian television series Julie Su Fantismos. The, uh, the show follows a teenager who finds her passion for music with the help of the Phantoms, a boy of three teen boys who have been dead for 25 years. Dan Cross and David Hodge will serve as showrunners on Julie and the Phantoms. The pair will also executive produce with George Salinas, Jamie Amarich, Hugo Geneva, and Jao Chimarev. Uh, Netflix Chief Content Officer Ted Sarando said... Throughout the course of his career, Kenny Ortega has inspired generations of artists and audiences alike. That he has chosen to make Netflix his creative home to work on both feature films and series is thrilling. We can't wait to see what he brings to Netflix to delight musical-loving families and audiences around the globe. Ortega says he's super excited about his partnership and projects with Netflix. 
The director said, As a fan of Netflix and their dynamic range of high-quality content, I am thrilled to begin a creative relationship with the company. I'm super excited about the projects we have had in development and share the enthusiasm I feel for the company. I look forward to do this new Netflix collaboration with the highest hopes. Ortega is known for directing Hocus Pocus and Disney's Channel's High School Musical and Descendants film series. In addition, he choreographed Pretty in Pink, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Dirty Dancing. This is a star Chrissy Metz is optimistic about her future on the show. The 38-year-old actress discussed the NBC series on Monday's episode of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon following its season 3 finale last week. Uh, Metz... Uh, who plays Kate Pearson on This Is Us, agreed with host Jimmy Fallon that she hopes her character isn't dead. The star says, that's the general consensus. Series creator Dan Fogelman has assured me everything is okay. Uh, she added, and here's the thing. Should she have passed away, Jack has passed away, referencing Kate's dad, Jack Pearson, played by Mino Ventimiglia. Because it's not linear, so we really don't need answers, folks. We just want to enjoy Kate was hospitalized early in season three after going into labor at 28 weeks pregnant. The season ended with Jack, her son, with her Toby, with Toby, Chris Sullivan, able to breathe on his own without a ventilator. Fans remain concerned, however, by a flash-forward scene that shows Toby alone. Matt says she and the cast, including Sullivan, managed to laugh and keep things light on set, despite some heavy material. She said of Sullivan, he's probably one of the funniest guys I know. He always tries to throw in a little, this is us, I'm with baby Jack in the, I, uh, the NICU. He's like, this is me, this is you, this is us. I'm like, not right now. He tries to do it in every single take. Metz also discussed the finale in an interview with ET Canada, published Monday. She addressed speculations Kate and Toby are not together in the future. The actors tease, it seems that way. However, our perception is our reality. So who knows? But we will find out the answers in season four. Seymour Cassell, the actor best known for starring in a number of films from director John Cassavetes, and Wes Anderson has died at the age of 84. Cassell died Sunday in Los Angeles from complications of Alzheimer's disease. His son, Matt, confirmed to The Hollywood Reporter. Brady also confirmed the film star's death. Cassell received an Oscar nomination for his role as Chad in 1968's Faces, which Cassavetes directed. He appeared in other features from Cassavetes, including Shadows in an uncredited role, Too Late Blues, Minnie and Mosca Luckwicks, The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, Opening Night, and Love Streams. Anderson used Cassell in his films Rushmore, The Royal Tenenbaums, and The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. Other film credits include Dick Tracy, Tin Men, The Last Tycoon, Honeymoon in Vegas, Convoy, and A Decent Proposal, among others. Cassell's television credits include 12 O'Clock High, Combat, The FBI, Batman, and The Lloyd Bridges Show in an episode directed by Cassavetes. Cassell is survived by his three children, Matt, Dillian, and Lisa, along with seven grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. He was 84. Manny Moore says she's working on new music with her husband, Dawn's frontman, Taylor Goldsmith. The 34-year-old singer and actress said on Monday's episode of Busy Tonight, she's collaborated with Goldsmith on new songs nearly 10 years after the release of her last album. Moore told host Busy Phillips, I'm working on new music, which is so exciting, I haven't put on a record in a decade. She says, I'm writing with my friends, I'm writing with my husband, to be able to share a huge part of who I am that's sort of been doormat for so long, to be able to share that with the people I'm closest to. There's nothing better than that. But this is a star named Fleetwood Mac as an inspiration behind her sound. Uh, she shared, I wanted to sound like what Fleetwood Mac would sound like in 2019. Lots of harmonies, sun-drenched California quintessential folky pop. Moore her last released the album Amanda Lee in May 2009. She said in an interview with the Los Angeles Times in February, her ex-husband, singer Ryan Adams, was emotionally abusive during their marriage and negatively impacted her music career. The star said his controlling behavior essentially did block my ability to make new connections in the industry during a very pivotal and potential lucrative time. My entered mid to late 20s. Moore plays Rebecca Pearson on the NBC series This Is Us, which completed in her third season last week. Morrissey will embark on a new tour with Interpol in the fall. The 59-year-old British singer and former Smith's frontman announced the venture in a Facebook post Tuesday. The post reads, announcing Morrissey's 2019 U.S. fall tour with special guest Interpol. Pre-sale starts tomorrow, April 10th at 10 a.m. local time. General on sale this Friday, April 12th. Interpol also shared the news on its Twitter account. The band wrote, very excited to announce we've been 
heading out on the road with an official Maz this fall. Tickets are on sale this Friday, 10 a.m. local time. Marcy and Interpol will kick off the tour September 5th in Columbia, Maryland, and bring the venture to a close October 6th in San Diego, California. Morrissey shared plans in March, his first ever Broadway residency show. He will perform from May 2nd to the 11th at the Lunch Fontaine Theater in New York and release his 12th studio album, California Sun, May 24th. Interpol will release the EP of Five Mess May 17th. The group will promote the EP on a world tour beginning the same month. The 2019 Billboard Music Awards will feature performances from Kelly Clarkson and Khaled. Uh, the Billboard announced in a tweet Monday, Clarkson and Khaled will take the stage main first at the awards show in Las Vegas. Sam Smith, Normandy, Panic at the Disco, and Laura Daniel will also perform. Smith and Normandy, will, who released the single Dancing with a Stranger in January, will perform together. Clarkson will perform a new single at the ceremony. She will also host the awards show for a second year in a row. Star told E! News, I had so much fun hosting the Billboard Music Awards last year, and I'm back for more. Uh, here, turning it up a notch this year, and I can't wait to celebrate all of all of my fellow amazing artists for another unforgettable night of live music. Smith and Panic and the Disco are performing at the Billboard Music Awards for the first time. Panic and the Disco is nominated for four awards, including Top Duo Group and Top Rock Artists. Billboard announced a full list of nominees last week. Ariana Grande and Cardi B are up for Top Female Artists, while Drake and Travis Scott are among those nominated for Top Male Artists. The B-52 have shared plans for their 40th anniversary tour. The group announced in a tweet Tuesday they will celebrate their 40th year as a band by kicking off a new world tour with OMD and Berlin in May. The post reads, tour announcement, we'll be kicking off our 40-plus city world tour. Our friends OMD and Berlin will join us at the selected U.S. shows. Tickets for the U.S. tour go on sale April 12th at 10 a.m. local time. The B-52 will begin the tour May 4th in West Palm Beach, Florida. The group will tour Europe in June and July before returning to the U.S. to perform August 1st in Costa Mesa, California. The North American leg ends September 24th in New York. Singer Kate Pearson said, according to Rolling Stones, who knew that when we played our first house dance party in Athens, Georgia in 1976, that we would be still rocking the house in 2019. From our friend Schneider added, woohoo. Europe, and then all over North America, dust off those go-go boots and shine your dancing shoes because the, 50, the B-52s are coming. The B-52s also share plans to publish their first ever book in 2020. In addition, the band is working with Fred Armisen and Craig Johnson to develop an authorized documentary about the group. The B-52s are known for such singles as Rock Lobster, Private Idaho, and Love Shack. The group last released the album Funplex in March 2008. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, April 10th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.